guys, I've just listened to your show for the RDA first show with Collecting Space Degree. And Michael, mm. what an interesting topic. Colleen, where you find all these people is absolutely amazing. <laughs> but I've got to ask you something. Mm. People, when they first start a business for themselves, will say it's driven by a passion or love that they've got. Mm. And I'm going, where did the passion or love come for you for mm. cleaning up space? How did it eventuate for you? I think it's uh, may maybe I've been interested in cleaning up the environment. I've, I've certainly been a, uh, aware of all the other issues of pollution and climate change. But um, for me, this was it, when when you see a problem. And then you see someone else is doing something about it. You're like, okay, they've got it sorted. But here, when I saw the problem, and I've been going to space conferences, and take a cursory interest in, uh, you know, space debris. Oh, that's actually a really big problem. Oh, what are you doing to solve it? Oh, there's a guy in South Africa who's building this brilliant little cube set that's going to um, uh, uh, solve a piece of debris, but I was like, but you know, there are tens of thousands, are, are we going to build lots, lots of different solutions? And um, I, I just really wanted to, I thought I had a, a better solution to, to solve more problems at the one time. What I found interesting listening to you when you were with Colleen and you were both talking is you're saying to Colleen there's really two options. One is to chase the stuff mm -hmm. and capture it in a net or whatever, yeah, yeah. a big claw or whatever, a bit like James Bond <laughs> movie. Yeah, yeah. Or the other one is to come along and knock it out of orbit so it burns up yeah. in, our, in our atmosphere. When you look at something moving through space, and I think you said it's moving at eight kilometers a second or something, mm -hmm. how do you knock something like that out of space without knocking your uh, piece of apparatus out of space at the same time. That's the trick, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> There's the yeah. patent. <laughs> Technically, this is the patent, but yeah. um, no, no, no. Uh, <coughs> that is something that we have some strong ideas about how we're going to do it. Um, but, you know, there are a number of other ways we could do it. So, um, uh, one for instance, there's a company, Boeing, who is planning to put clouds of atmosphere in the way of the piece of space debris yeah, that's flying past. And one thing about space debris is that everything that hits uh, uh, little amounts of atmosphere in the low Earth orbit will eventually get lower and lower and lower, fall back into the atmosphere and burn up. So. Yeah, it, it's uh, so you can actually look at how high, how uh, 400 kilometer altitude where the International Space Station is. Something, if if the International Space Station wasn't constantly being boosted up, uh, would fall down in a matter of years. So so some all this space debris is constantly running into small amounts of atmosphere and bringing it down to the atmosphere. So bring it down into the, the thicker part of the atmosphere. So we, we just want to accelerate that process. Accelerating it. Colleen, when you find innovators like Mike and what they're doing, and you deal with innovators all the time, RDA, where does RDA sit? So why are you talking to all these innovators? Why are you trying to bring them all together from RDA's yep. perspective? She likes us. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, well, uh, RDA Perth, uh, one of our, our main uh, focus areas is uh, uh, looking at uh, new business investment, job growth, and innovation plays a really huge part of that. So um, with that, when we come across uh, a startup or some piece of innovation, we want to promote it. We want to we want to build the narrative and tell the story about Western Australia. Look at all the great things that we've got here. You know, we 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 need to be proud of what we've got, and we need to speak really loudly. And so, you know, hopefully by bringing people on and sharing these um, videos uh, globally, we can say, look, WA's got it all here.
It's interesting, I was listening to you both talk, and Colleen, you mentioned it was Mike going for grants and certain things like that, and Mike was saying it's tough. How do you, how do you find, Colleen, when people like Mike are going for grants to help their innovation, to get stuff like this, pardon the pun, off the ground, <laughs> how, how tough do you actually find it yourself? Um, well, for us, uh, because we're federally funded, what we try and do is take this information back to the, the policy makers and the decision makers to say, look, there are a few issues with the, you know, with um, the application process or, you know, we, so we, we're, we're trying to do our job, which is, uh, you know, uh, work on behalf of our region, take that information uh, back to where they can possibly maybe review and maybe make it a little easier because we would hate to see a bunch of startups out there with really great technology and really great innovation struggling um, because the, 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 the grant process is a little problematic. And Mike, when you come to fund some of this, obviously you guys had to kick in some of your souls to stand off, so that's kind of backing yourself. Mm -hmm. But do you have any strategic plans in place now to keep that funding going? You're saying you're going to build large models, we're talking about putting them on full-size rockets and so forth. Yeah, well, we have, um, well, we did a strategy workshop the other day, our, our core team, and so uh, one thing I would say about the other members of the team, but me coming from a science background, they all have the, the bring this wealth of business experience to Exodus. So um, in terms of strategizing how we're going to, you know, in 12 months we're aiming to, to sort of bring on paid employees and in three years we're aiming to launch something and you know have have a timeline where we know where we're aiming to get to at each stage of the the process um so it, yes we're thinking about it it's Mike, for a lot of businesses who invent things like yourself mm -hmm. they come with two choices one is to develop this invention and run it as their own internal company, mm -hmm. or want to develop the invention and then franchise it out to other space agencies, mm -hmm. who like NASA, who may say, well, we'll pay your licensing fee. Mm -hmm. do, do you go down this path? Do you map these things out? And what's your intention at the moment? Is it, is it hard to, to know the future? Yeah. But um, certainly we're interested if, if, if people see this and want to get in touch with us, and by all means, we're very eager to make as many connections in, in industry as we can. Um, uh, yeah, but so, so we're very open to forming partnerships, um, but no one can know the future, can they? Yeah. Um, when you're developing these sorts of things, do you have size limits? I mean, you talked about a wrench up there, and I can imagine mm. something like that, eight kilometers a second. It's like, mm. is there size limits your technology can actually knock out of orbit, or is there actually going, actually, this is all we really need to deal with. The bigger stuff will come down mm. by itself. Well, the, the limitation is not so much with our technology, but with the laser tracking. How So 10 centimeters is about, well, it's the size of a CubeSat, and it's about the limit of what the laser tracking systems can track. So there's a lot of work in that industry now is aiming to get that more precise. Um, but we could, if we knew where the flecks of paint and the bolts were, we could take them out of orbit. Wow. Flecks of paint. I know. You don't think of flecks of no. paint, do you? Well, uh, uh, it's like the, everything that is up there, until it comes down or somewhere goes out of Earth orbit, it's, it's still up there. It'll be up there, and some of the stuff will be up there in centuries to come, unless we do something about it. So really try and put the call to action there that you, you know. Space environmentalist. Space but environmentalist. What the, the, I don't want to get political here, no. but um, <laughs> it's like the, the low Earth orbit, particularly, um, is prone to um, having a situation where we wouldn't be able to use space effectively anymore. Beyond low Earth orbit, uh, like even where the geostationary sat or the weather satellites are, um, that's less of a risk because it's so much further out from Earth. But low Earth orbit where all the GPS, all the communication satellites, all, all the military satellites are, 
um, that area to to create more debris in that area would be very not wise. So so really that area is somewhere also where I see you know there's going to be space tourism going forward. People people want to go up and see that view, and that's the exact spot where we would want to keep want to eventually have large numbers of people that could you know go up to orbit for a week or something. Wow. Um, but that's the area we need to keep clean. That's the area you need to keep clean. When you were developing, and obviously you don't have to say because I know what uh, yeah. IP in that is, when you start making things like this with the technology of 3D printers and your knowledge of science and you're talking about spinning orbits, you mentioned something in the interview I thought was quite interesting, how your technology then can create a spinning environment for astronauts. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about creating environments almost trying to simulate a little bit of gravity for them to create pressures on the body? Yes. So, so as a, um, the doctors and our team know, and as I've known from going to conferences, that these living in zero gravity, in, in up on the ISS where you're floating around, uh, creates a number of problems that we know about and some more problems that we think we know about. Uh, and so uh, I think eventually we're going to need to get to the stage where there is some kind of spin gravity for every astronaut that is up there. If, if we want to stay up there for longer than a year or two. Um, then we, 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 we hear a lot, don't we, about going further. I'm going to probably stretch a little bit off your topic, but you talk mm. about taking space travel and we talk about going to the phones. Mm. Is spin gravity, I'm just trying to get my head around it, can it or can something like it simulate full gravity like we've got on Earth so we can have prolonged space? Yes. Wow. Wow. That's, that, so as our guiding star, no fun intended, that, yes. that's where I want to eventually get to and that's what really excites me. But no wonder you like these people, Colleen. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I learned like, so much. You, 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 so, so the spin gravity in the far future, decades maybe. Yeah. But if you can go out and, and think of, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, someone who's going through university and goes, ah, and, uh, instead of doing my gap year around the planet, going traveling, uh, I'll just go, you know, touch, uh, touch an asteroid or something. Wow. Like, like and, and I, <laughs> People are like, oh, that's so sci-fi. I'm like, yes, it is sci-fi, but it's also possible. It's also possible. It, wow. It, it's, there, this, this isn't just a, a government-run thing anymore. There are hundreds and hundreds of companies that have been founded in the last couple of years. All people like me who, who want to go to space, sure, but who have these brilliant ideas about how to do it. And I, I just want people to know that it's not science fiction anymore. Colin, you deal with a lot of these people. I've had Conrad on and put a link to Conrad's mm. uh, video there with his. Uh, are you finding that you've got these entrepreneurs that are like just community and going, this stuff's possible? Is this what we're finding in WA or is what you're finding at, uh, where you're at RDA Perth? Uh, yes, I'm finding there are so many uh, startups, and, and I do agree there's there's been a huge increase in startups over the past couple of years. Um, we've got our, our, our drone um, hub that we're looking at, um, and that has grown by 57% in two years. You know, So the technology and the people that are moving into this space, it's just absolutely wonderful. And, and I think it's, um, you know, we talk about STEM skills and we talk about education. I think all of these things opening up, are going to create, you know, all these new sciences of the future mm. that we're not even aware of, as you're referencing. Mm. You know, it's not. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's not. You, you don't know, but but I would add that for so long, even in Perth, it's been you know, when I was growing up. Ah, oh, you'll need to go to Eastern states. You'll need to go to America to do this. And I'm like, no, not anymore. We got this. We we can do this in Perth. No. Why Perth? Do you think it's got some advantages being here in Western Australia? I think we have the educational background, we have the links with industry, and 
and in some ways we have the funding um, or the the individuals who are interested in making this happen the, certainly the investment mm. um, and uh, I would think the isolation of Western Australia actually think, adds to well there are so many reasons that space agencies have come to WA because of the isolation but especially Perth being this kind of the go-to place for anywhere in WA means that Perth has had all these you know characters, cast of characters kind of joining together and uh, like we're starting to talk to each other now. It's, it's interesting. Someone who's watching, someone mm. who's maybe in high school looking at going to university but mm. going, this is a path I want to go down. Mm -hmm. Can they chat to you, Mike, and, and your team? Talk to me. Talk to me. Uh, yeah. Mike at exodusspacesystems.com And an investor that says, you know what, this sounds like something they'd like to get involved in. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been absolutely fantastic. I, I appreciate you staying back after the show as well, just for an off the cuff chat. Yeah, this was fun. This was fun. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, Colleen, thank you thank so you much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>